I'd like to get you started working with schemas in Oxygen, and here's how we're going to go about it. I'll start with the simplest idea of just viewing a schema, and we'll look at the two views you can take of a schema, text view and chart view. I'll give you some tips on getting started with schemas, like starting a schema from scratch, um, starting an instance once you've got a schema from scratch, and then we'll talk about linking an existing instance to a schema. So that makes the forges the link between an instance and a schema. Then we'll talk about real big concepts of reading a schema, including the idea of global elements, the tag hierarchy, and the difference between how attributes and elements look. And we'll end with a discussion of the schema versus the instance by talking about the values versus the definitions of the tags. All right, so let's get started. I'm going, I have a schema open here. And this is article XSD. This is actually the schema that corresponds to the file that you used in the um, instances exercises. And uh, you can see right away that we have some little pieces of, uh, looks like almost little flowchart symbols or something on here. This is the graphical view or the chart view. It's also called in this application the schema view. But I want to start real quickly by introducing you to this text view. This is what the schema actually looks like. This is this. This is the schema. Um, in text form. And the first thing you should notice is that it's an XML file. We have, uh, here's an open tag, and I can collapse that open tag. Here's another open tag. I can collapse the entire thing. This is the document or the root tag of the XML file called schema, etc., etc. I won't go into detail at all, and we'll leave this view in just a second after I just um, cue you into one thing, and that's this namespace here. The XS namespace, as I've said in other places, defines these tags as part of the schema family. So you could, and maybe some of you will, work directly in this text view. But for my money, and especially in this class, this is the view that wins, because this is much more uh, easy to deal with and easy to navigate around. We can open and close things. Um, it's very graphical. There's symbols to indicate most of what you need to see. And it's far easier to deal with. OK, so that's, that's your basic orientation to a schema. It's got a text view, and it's got this graphical view. And we'll get much more into detail about this uh, about this graphical view and how it works uh, as we go along. So the next thing I want to do is talk to you about starting a schema, getting a schema from uh, getting an instance out of a schema and linking to a new schema. So starting a schema really is easy is as easy as saying file new and then choose XML schema. And you can skip this box by just saying okay, don't even worry about what it says in that box and you'll come to a screen like this. You right click on the word schema and you say new global element. And this is going to be the root element of your schema. I am the root. And now you right click on that and you say append child. And don't worry about, just worry about the steps right now, not exactly what they mean. Append child sequence, then append child element. And I, oops, I am, if I can just type here, the first. Child. Okay, so now I have a, uh, I have a, um, I have a very simple schema here. I'm going to append another element here, and then I'm going to take I am the first child and turn him into I am the second child. Okay, so now I have a very simple schema, and again, don't worry too much about um, about what the schema means or the operations that I just performed. We'll get into those later. I just want to give you the idea of the flow. So now I'll say file save. And I'll save this someplace off to the side. I don't know where it wants to put it right here. Uh, not there. Let's just put it, oh, I don't know, in some sort of temporary directory. How about that? And I'm going to call it test schema, test.xsd. And I save it. Now I have a new schema. That's it. Now, what if I want to create a, a, an XML file that uses this schema? Now I'll say file new. And instead of XSL, XSD file, I'll say XML document. And now it says use a DTD of schema. Yes, I do. I'm going to click this little file dialog. I'm going to choose text SSD. And I'm going to say OK here without worrying too much more about what the, um, uh, what the other options are, which I'll get to someday as I, uh, as I need to. And notice I have an XML file, an instance file, that obeys the rules that I put in the schema. There it is. I am the root, I am the first child, I am the second child, and now I'll focus you on this right here. This is the link between the instance and schema. Um, and right now it's an absolute link. It says the file is at c colon backslash temp test xsd. By the way, let me just save this file. So I'm going to save this, and I'll save this one as temp xml. 
and it's in that same temp directory. There. So now I have this, and now I don't need an absolute link anymore. I can make a relative link. Remember the absolute path versus the relative path? I just changed an absolute path to this file, to the schema, to a relative path to the same file. Now this is assuming that test XSD and text XML are in the same directory, which they are. And now I can click my little button right here, and this says it's valid, and yes it is. Now if I break one of these tags, let me do that. So now it doesn't follow the schema anymore because I got rid of that, that I there. Notice, by the way, when I got rid of it here, um, Oxygen was nice enough to get rid of it in the close tag as well. That's a very um, convenient feature of, of Oxygen. But notice that it gave me wavy little underlines saying uh, that there's something wrong. And in fact, it says I expected to see an I am the first child. And of course, that's true. You'll get used to the crypticness of the error messages, and you'll also get used to figuring out what's going wrong with the file, even though the error message doesn't help you very much. Okay, so that's the ideas of linking a file to a, a schema through this little place right here, and you'll always see this pretty much in the files that we have, this attribute called XSI, no namespace schema location. Don't worry about exactly what it means, just recognize that's the place where you type in the name of the schema. Also, as much as possible and as often as possible, use these relative paths instead of using absolute paths. You'll get messed up later on by having two schemas and, being, and pointing to the wrong one. But if you keep your schemas and your instance all in the same directory and use um, relative paths, then you can't get messed up that way. Okay, what's next? Let me get rid of these two files. Oh, okay, I'll save you just in case I need to come back to you. Get rid of you. Go back to what I'm talking to you about. And we've done starting a schema, starting an instance from a schema, and linking.